Hi everyone, it's Clyde at Vibrant Soap, and I got this fragrance from Rustic Essentials called Forbidden Fruit, and already I was starting to think, forbidden fruit, what can I do with that? There's a lot to that that can kind of inspire the color choices and the design choices for the soap. And at the same time, I got this great um, gift from Carrie Thornsbury at Nurture Soap of all these different, 117 different colors of mica. So I really went through this assortment as the sort of um, choice point to design the soap. And I was also keeping in mind that there was this movie, a uh, musical play that I saw years ago called uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Some of you have seen this movie and I thought of that sinister plant. And that this plant had really pleasing colors to it, but it was like so sweet that this uh, this plant with all these teeth and everything was really a evil entity. So I thought that's the direction I was going to go with this. I'm going to design it with sweet colors, but um, something about the pairing of these particular greens and and pinks that I used in this is something a little off-putting. So I still wanted it to look like a nice soap, but I want people to look at it and say, you know, if you put the words uh, forbidden fruit with this uh, color design, it kind of uh, gives you this certain feeling. So that's what this is all about. And I'm also playing with a new swirl idea. Um, I'm gonna call it the tea pour because what I'm gonna do is pour um, a little bit of soap back and forth as I pour the soap. So it's really a perpendic perpendicular way of pouring soap. So you'll see what I mean when we get started with the soap. And that's right now. Okay, everything's at about 73 degrees. And I'm not gonna put any milk in this formula just for the sure reason that recently I think the milks have been causing my soaps to overheat so if anything this is a little experiment to see if this recipe sort of heats up with the milk so let's blend the milk and the <laughs> so let's blend the oils and the kaolin clay So that's all blended. Let me get the fragrance in there. This smells really great. This is Forbidden Fruit, and I got this at Rustic Essentials. Let's get the lye in there. It says that it's not going to accelerate on me, which would be great, especially for the swirl I have in store for this soap. Okay, that's emulsified. Now let's get the colors mixed with the soap. These are some the new micas that I got with the, all of our micas. combination of great micas from Carriette Nurture Soap. And I'm just going to pour this, I'll stir that and combine that with the pink in a little bit. So that's ready to go. And then I'm going to try a new swirl idea that I have. So different from the concentric pour. Maybe I need a little bit more of this pink. Okay, that's just the right amount. Remember you can call the shots on what the right amount is because you're making the soap. Alright, so let me get the green in this. And I just took an approximated Yes, with this too. I don't want it really green. Just enough to add a nice green base to this soap.
That's beautiful. That's what I was shooting for. That's a great green too. It's probably going to turn sort of an ugly, ugly green, but if I know greens, you know it usually morphs back to something really nice. Looks great. So let me stir out some bubbles here. Just make sure everything's off the edges of the bowl. And it's staying nice and fluid. So there's a lot going on here when you stir your batter out. You're making sure it's all integrated. And that is a great consistency through and through. And you're also getting a good feel for what you're going to be working with. Okay, that looks great. And now I'm going to get a little whisk here. And get these two colors all combined. And this little whisk works great because I've already wet down the micas and integrated it in some oil so it really does want to combine pretty nicely and what a great pink this is so the idea is to get like little vines throughout the soap and then add a drop swirl on the top to symbolize the fruit. I think I'll combine this a little bit later when I need it. So first of all, let me get these out of the way so I don't spill them. And I'm going to call this the T pour. T as in the letter T. And what I'm going to do is or while I do a sort of perpendicular back and forth here. I have a little bit more from the top. And I wanted this pink to be more on the top of this, so do the same thing there. And now let's scrape the rest of this pattern there. Combine this now. And I'm going to stir that up a little too. This is a really deep, almost black purple called Blackberry. And that's also in that All Our Micas a combination of Micas from Nurture Soap. Gonna do it in the pot swirl there, but I'm pouring from about really two feet above this so I can get that in there really deep and then take a chopstick the broad end of it and just combine it a little bit and 
And then I'm gonna do a drop swirl into this soap. Again, from about two feet up, so it goes far in there. This is supposed to look a little bit sinister, but I hope it turns out beautiful as well, just because of the name. There's some ideas of how I want to color and design the soap. So with a name of Forbidden Fruit of the fragrance, I didn't want to make it just look cherry and pastel. Because what fun is that? Because it's like, do you want Mary Poppins or do you want Maleficent? I would like a little bit of green, and I used almost all of it, but you know, if I scrape really well, maybe I can get a little bit in the places where it doesn't show up, just a little bit. It's really this end that's closest to me. A swirl here. I haven't really done this back and forth diagonally thing for a while. Now I have my micro drizzle. This sparkly kind of mica. I am going to glitter this soap to just a little bit of like magenta looks great on top. Then I'll come by and go the other direction. With little curves, makes it look more like vines, which was the idea anyway. Well, that's cool. And look at this super sparkles. It's an environmental glitter. Wow, that goes everywhere. In that sheen anyway. So there is my forbidden fruit cold process soap and let's bring you back for the cut. Okay some of my corners didn't come out but that happens sometimes. Cut off the end. So I think there's going to be some color that shows up down here other than the greens, but the swirl is interesting. As you know, this is the first time I've 
then a swirl like this. So I wanted the purples to end up on the top. And it's got that nice sheen from that. One of the um, colors has a bit of um, glitter in it. So I wanted to get the idea of uh, forbidden fruit. So that kind of symbolizes that. And I thought that the other swirls are sort of like the vine that the fruit was growing on. I like this spring green too. I know I knew that I wanted um, a drop swirl, but I knew that I wanted it to have some dimension to it too, so that's why I I combined that reddish purple with uh, a color from Nurture Soap called Blackberry. It's almost black, but it's really a dark purple. Here's some of those swirls that are showing up. Those are cool. So I think I will be playing around with this swirl like I did with the concentric circle pour too. For now I'm just calling this a, a tea pour because as I poured it I was pouring perpendicular um, fine lines into the batter as I poured it. That's different. I think it partially gels. The center is a little darker, but that may change as the soap cures. Hope you all will have a beautiful Thanksgiving together with friends and family. So I have plans to do that. It's a busy time of the year. But also very nice. It's a pretty bar. So thanks for watching everyone. I see a lot of people on my Instagram as well. So don't forget to say hello and subscribe or follow and comment if you have something to say. I always welcome that. This is my last cut. The store is open and life is good. So everyone have a safe, happy holiday and I'll be back with another video real soon. And we'll see you all later. Okay, bye everyone.